ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Goldsher. Cincinnati, how we doing? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Uh, I was actually told recently that I have a very hateable face. It's always cool to hear that, you know. I, get, I have like a very douchey look to me. I'm aware of that. You know, like some people have like resting bitch face. I have like resting lacrosse face. I have like resting Riverdale face, you know. It's okay. The way I dress uh, certainly doesn't help. You know, I, I know I look like a Zara ad came to life or something. <laughs> like the story of Pinocchio, if it wasn't about a puppet, but it was about a mannequin at PacSun <laughs> who made a wish to be a douchebag one day. <laughs> it's funny to find out uh, the way other people think you look compared to the way you think you look. And uh, it, it happened to me recently. Someone messaged me. They said, uh, you have a celebrity look-alike. And in my head, I was just like, probably Brad Pitt. Right? <laughs> so I respond. I said, who is it? They said, uh, you look like Emma Watson. <laughs> oh, damn. I do. I, I don't look like Fight Club Brad Pitt. They're like, uh, maybe if he's fighting Voldemort. Uh, <laughs> But no, not, not Brad Pitt. That's fine. I'm stuck. I'm stuck like this. Yeah, you can't even spell Aryan without Ryan. You know? <laughs> it sucks because my outside doesn't match my inside. Like, on the outside, people think I'm just like this aggressive dude, right? But I'm like so harmless. Like, they think I drive a Honda with lights underneath it. They don't realize I make wishes at 1111. I'm not a monster. <laughs> It's like a sedated tiger at a zoo that they let you pet, okay? Scary on the outside, safe on the inside, okay? And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I know uh, a lot of you don't know who I am, so I want to talk about who I am and my identity. And uh, what I want to start with is I want to talk about who I am in relation to the world we live in, because we live in a really interesting time, right? We, everything's changing, right? Names are changing, words are changing, everything has an acronym now, and uh, I, I'm, I'm totally on board with the acronyms. I always learn them, but I'm always like two weeks late. <laughs> There's always like two weeks. I'm just like, BDSM, is that a band? You know, I'm just like. <laughs> and uh, the worst example of that is I confused one acronym for another. I confused POC, person of color, with P-O-T-C, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like the stupidest guy in North America. I was like, wow, Pirates of the Caribbean, it's really relevant right now. Because uh, <laughs> nobody tells you when there's a new acronym. They just start using it free willy. And I'm a, I'm a huge Pirates of the Caribbean fan, so I was pretty jazzed on it, okay? <laughs> And I had, I had a black roommate at the time, too. And I, he would say things to me. He's like, yeah, I'm having a party, and it's going to be all POC. And I was like, count me in. Uh, <laughs> love it. And I was just digging myself this crazy hole. I, I was just like, dude, I love POC. He's like, great. I was like, I do all their voices. He's like... <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm going to come to the party. I'm going to dress like a POC. I'm going to talk like a POC. He's like, do not do that. And uh, he cleared it up for me, but um, God, I wish he didn't, you know? <laughs> I wish I was just able to show up at that party, head to toe, Jack Sparrow dress. <laughs> like, why is the room always golden mate, Savvy? Huh? No one dressed up. Weird. <laughs> Just like Davy Jones, just like 100 souls. <laughs> Jack Sparrow, I've come to settle his debt. 
If you don't get this, it's because it's for my POTCs in the crowd. Yeah! It's not for you, that's for the POTCs. <laughs> but yeah, the world we live in. We live, uh, we live in a really uh, interesting time. We're living in uh, Joe Biden's America. Yeah. Joe Biden's my favorite president to hear speak. Why? Because I like riddles. <laughs> Every time he's on TV, it's like a new ad lib. You know, he's like, folks, folks, you know, when I was a little boy, America was a small town. <laughs> well, he's America, I, used to, I broke my elbow, folks. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 broken elbow, ages four to nine. You go, you go to, uh, go to the doc, doc, doctor was also the mayor, folks. <laughs> You didn't pay him in money. You, gotta, you give him garlic bread. You, you give him a whole bushel of garlic bread, folks. You Dr. Mayor Garlic Bread. You say, what? The hell? That's the president. <laughs> the hell? That guy hung out with Obama for eight years. <laughs> didn't pick up anything. No tips. Obama was our most straightforward president. Uh, we're gonna do uh, this, and uh, we're gonna do it uh, here. That was Obama. <laughs> uh, this is happening here, uh, and we need to do uh, this. How did we go from that to, I met a guy named Pierre, folks. <laughs> uh, he plays racquetball. Uh, I watch him play. <laughs> what the hell? Everything's different. We live in a, in a new world. I, uh, music is way different. Uh, me, personally, I listen, to, I listen to a lot of EDM. Yeah, it's, a, it's another acronym. It's not a disease. It's a, <laughs> uh, electronic dance music. And it's just so different having that be the music of my generation. Just because music is so important to my parents' generation. They had, like, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. And, like, like I have a friend whose middle name is Paul after Paul McCartney. Like, am I supposed to do that? Like, am I, am I supposed to name my kid after a DJ? <laughs> like, yes, this is my boy, Alexander Diplo Goldshire. <laughs> yeah, where's my daughter, Catherine the Chainsmokers Goldshire? <laughs> oh, she's, yep. Oh, I looked up there. <laughs> she's probably with the neighbor. Anthony Flume Rodriguez. <laughs> it's just so different, and it's made super different, too. Like, I'm sure you've heard the stories of, like, oh, hey, Jude, it was made with 50 instruments, and it took six months. Like, yeah, my favorite song was made by a Swedish guy on a MacBook Air. <laughs> yeah, and it probably wasn't the only tab open, too, you know? He's, like, making my favorite song seeing if Chipotle was still open, you know, <laughs> DJ stuff. Uh, it's all made on computers. It, it's crazy. It, my, I have a friend who's a DJ as well, and uh, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I have a show, and I'm so nervous. Like, I'm so nervous for my show. I was like, what are you nervous about? You made all these songs nine months ago. <laughs> are you nervous that the files won't load? Like... <laughs> You're nervous that you're gonna single click instead of double click? Like, like, I wish my life was that easy as a comedian. I could just stand up here, play some pre-recorded jokes for you, and I just have to talk to the crowd in between. Here's, here's, what, uh, here's what that would look like. What's the deal with Starbucks cup sizes? Tall isn't very tall. Ha, ha. <laughs> How we do in Stockholm? Two Jews walk into a bar. We're gonna skip that one. <laughs> Don't I kind of look like Anakin Skywalker if he joined a fraternity? <laughs> That'd be the life. <laughs> they have it so easy. Um, here's, some, here's, here's, what, here's something else. Here's my impression of a sign language interpreter at a Skrillex concert.
Thank you. A big part of who I am is the things I consume, and uh, the thing I consume the most is actually movies. I'm a huge movie fan, and I really look up to the celebrities I see. Lately, I've been watching a lot of Mark Wahlberg movies. Is anyone a Mark Wahlberg fan? Yeah. Good, good, yeah. Mark Wahlberg averages more questions per minute than any other actor in Hollywood. <laughs> Every movie he's in, he's just like, wait a minute, so you're telling me we're just two cops in Boston and something's going on and we gotta figure it out? <laughs> it's like he doesn't know the plot of the movie. He's trying to figure it out as he goes. <laughs> Wait a minute, so there's an American tragedy and only I can stop it? What? <laughs> Where are you from, dude? <laughs> like, I, I wish he was in like every famous movie doing that. Just like he's in Forrest Gump, just like, Wait a minute, life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. And I'm a Vietnam War veteran and I'm a ping pong champion and I'm dating like the most awful woman of all time. <laughs> So you're telling me Titanic is the ship of dreams and it was, it really was? And we can both definitely float on this thing, but for some reason we're choosing not to. <laughs> so you're telling me this hotel here in Rwanda is, a, I'm actually gonna leave that. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably not, no, probably not that one. Mark Wahlberg is the most confused actor in Hollywood. Matthew McConaughey is the most confusing. <laughs> Like, Matthew McConaughey, I don't even know what realm he's living in. Like, if, do you remember when his book came out and he was, like, doing all these interviews and videos, just spewing all this nonsense? He's just like, I went to the desert. I wrote this book 45 different times in my mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> they asked me if I wanted a ghost rider. I said, I'm not a ghost. <laughs> He doesn't need a book. That guy needs like a celebrity master class. Like, how did Penn and Teller get a master class before Matthew McConaughey, you know? <laughs> like his would just be a, this is your master class on mastering master class. <laughs> Thoughts, dreams, visions, aspirations, inside, outside, left side, right side, pesticide. <laughs> I was listening to David Archuleta on vinyl. <laughs> stupid. So stupid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason Mark Wahlberg and Matthew McConaughey have never been in a movie together. That's like the yin and yang of Hollywood. We are not human beings. We are thoughts inside of our brains. We are a collective consciousness of individuals, none of us actually exist. So you're telling me? <laughs> Another actor I, I, I look up to a lot is, uh, is Morgan Freeman. Anyone a Morgan Freeman fan? Yeah. I love, he has the most calming narrator voice. Like he makes anything sound good. Like it was a Saturday evening in a warehouse in Cincinnati. <laughs> We were watching a comedian who vaguely looks like Emma Watson <laughs> trying his damn best. Like, I, I wish he was the bearer of bad news for me. Like, I wish he was my doctor. He's like, Ryan, you have something we call a urinary tract infection. <laughs> Just a little pee-pee pressure, no big deal. <laughs> So I, I get an interesting response when I do that voice because people are like, well, you sound like Morgan Freeman, but you're just like this Jewish guy. And I'm like, well, riddle me this. <laughs> <laughs> there... I didn't expect that to get a laugh. I was just, I was just moving on to the next part of the joke. <laughs> so I say there, there have been a hundred billion humans in the world history there was probably one of them that was a Jewish guy who sounded like Morgan Freeman. There was pro one guy who was probably just like, Baruch Atah Adonai. Uh, it is I, Morgan Friedberg. I was playing basketball in my synagogue men's league and uh, you know, my vertical jump got a lot higher. I can finally almost touch the net. 
Uh, here's my impression of Will Ferrell touching a hot bowl of guacamole. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, this guacamole's hot. Okay. Uh, uh, here's my impression of Leonardo DiCaprio on his girlfriend's 25th birthday. <clears throat> All right, looks like we're done here. Uh, <laughs> so I really looked up to these celebrities a lot. And uh, honestly, I might have looked up to them too much because for a long time, I didn't really have a personality of my own because I was just trying to be like these celebrities I looked up to. I, I was just like this mishmash of I was just like Johnny DiCaprio Pitt Downey Jr. Like, I wasn't a real person. And it started to affect me in my life, and it affected me in my relationships, especially with girls, because I wasn't being myself. I was just trying to be someone else. Like, every date I went on, I was like Mark Wahlberg. I was like, oh, how tall are you? You play softball? That's my favorite sport. Wow. Where are you from? We're from the same hometown because we go to the same high school? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I was, I was like trying to be cooler than them. Like I was trying to be like Robert Downey Jr. Just like, yeah, okay, so here's the deal. Uh, I didn't listen to childish music. Uh, I listened to the oldies, Zeppelin, Beach Boys, Robert Plant. Uh, yeah, I don't drink coffee, I drink matcha. Any, that was an ass, you know, I was a total ass. <laughs> and uh, I was just failing over and over and over with girls because I wasn't being myself. And what actually took for me to realize that was my first big crush. The first real exciting crush that I had. And I was 15 years old, right? And when you're 15, guys are like prehistoric. They're just like, Ugh, milk bags, baby hole, come on, you know? It's like, <laughs> we're dumb. It's also like when you're 15, like I had a driver's permit, like, I didn't know what I was planning. Like, oh, I'll, I'll pick you up, but my, my mom will be in the passenger seat. Like, <laughs> how do you even date when you're 15? Uh, but I had a crush on this girl. And she was beautiful. She was super smart. She was funny. And um, it I sounds like she dies. She's, she's alive. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't die at the end of this. But I thought I had no chance with her. So I wasn't trying to be anyone. I was just being me. Because I said, oh, I have no chance with a girl. I'm just going to be her friend. So for the first time, I wasn't Johnny DiCaprio Pitt Downey Jr. I was just Ryan Goldshire. And I became friends with this girl. And we would just hang out, and we became friends, and we'd go on walks, because driver's permit. Uh, and one night, we're, we're walking around a park and uh, having a good time, and I checked my watch. And I was like, oh, shoot, time to be honest. I said, look, I know I look like I drive a Honda with lights underneath it, but it's 11-11, and I always make wishes at 11-11. So she's like, okay. So I made a wish, she made a wish, and I was like, okay, thanks, thanks for doing that. And I said, uh, I hope your wish comes true. And after that, she grabbed my face, and then she kissed me. And she said, it just did. That's a true story. <laughs> it sounds like a Nicholas Sparks book. That's true. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like the best day of my life. And after then, we had like this fun summer fling when I was 15. But comes the first relationship, comes the first breakup. And uh, I've been through a bunch of breakups. Uh, I'm not saying I have baggage, but uh, I have a carry-on. <laughs> And a personal item, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and breakups are super hard, right? And I think they're harder for this generation than any other generation before because of social media. Where back in the day, you used to break up with someone, you used to just never see them again. But now, after you break up, you have to see them post pictures and move on and live a whole life without you and date other people. So that's why I say breakups now are harder than your grandma dying. 
because when my grandma died, she didn't post any pictures <laughs> hanging out with a new grandkid, you know? <laughs> I wasn't tapping through stories, and I'm like, is that my grandma with a taller grandkid? <laughs> I wasn't getting cryptic texts from my dead grandma. Like, oh, I would love to see you when you're in town. <laughs> Hanging out with River Phoenix up here, you know? It's like... This is getting too serious. Let's go back to impressions. Uh, here's, here's Christopher Walken at a sumo match. Wow, that's a big boy. <laughs> but no, breakups are really hard. And breakups, they have... <laughs> yeah, we're going back, by the way. Breakup thing's not over, buddy. Breakups are hard, especially because they're so virtual, too. There's, like, so much texting involved. Like, my last breakup, uh, not with the 15-year-old, was... Uh, and she's not 15 anymore, by the way. I should make that clear. She, we were both 15, and now we're both... Uh, she's also alive, right? She doesn't... She's not dead, and she's not 15. And, anyways. The last breakup I had was, like, I would craft the text with my friends and then screenshot, and then they would help me write another one, and I'd send it. And then I found out that she was doing the same thing with her friends. So I was like, did we even break up? Or did two writer's rooms just make a fan fiction ending of our relationship? <laughs> like, oh wow, he would say that. Yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> Blocking is an important part of breakups nowadays too. Blocking is pretty much saying, I don't know how to deal with this, so Verizon's going to. <laughs> And also, like, you can't get advice from your parents. For, like, our, for, our parents are, like, the most emotionally unavailable generation ever. <laughs> like, my dad was like, uh, drink water, go on a run. I'm like... <laughs> That's how you've been dealing with things? Water? Go, water and runs? Oh, my God. I, I have great parents, very loving, supportive parents. I love my parents a lot. Um, they are really, really interesting, though. Uh, I'll explain my dad. Uh, to, to picture my dad, picture a velociraptor, ah, make him Jewish, eh, that's my dad. <laughs> and he, he kind of talks like a goblin. He's like, hey, buddy, you're a good boy, buddy. You're a good... He talks to me like I'm a basset hound. He's like, hey, good boy, buddy. You're a good guy. <laughs> He's like the most social, eccentric guy. Like, he's always doing a ton of different things. Like, I, like, I'll call him, I'll be like, hey dad, what's up? He's like, I'm at the Super Bowl. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has this horrible habit uh, where he just doesn't tell me anything. Like, uh, this, is, this is sad, but he, he put my dog down and forgot to tell me. Yeah, it was, I was just like, where's Maggie? He's like, oh buddy. <laughs> You're a good boy, buddy. <laughs> and, uh, and also, so for the longest time, I didn't know what he did for a living because he was always doing so many different things. And uh, it's a true story. We were driving in his car and he stops at a light and he pulls out his phone. He goes, Oh, uh, that's not good, buddy. I was like, what's up, dad? He's like, well, the racehorse died. <laughs> I was like, we have a racehorse? He's like, not anymore, we don't. <laughs> and that's where I found out that my dad's job when I was younger is he bought a retired former superstar racehorse and you would pay him money to mate with it. <laughs> he was a horse pimp. Isn't that crazy? It's not registering with you how insane that is? Oh my God. He's like, I didn't tell you? I'm like, yeah, I would have remembered that. <laughs> my God. Yeah, and he showed me a picture of the horse. Uh, it was retired. <laughs> that was a washed up looking racehorse. It was like, it's like the Dennis Rodman of racehorses. You're like, that was an athlete? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like the only kid at school that was like downplaying what his dad did after that. <laughs> Like, everyone's like, my dad's a spy. I'm like, my dad is, uh, eats, eats food, goes to bed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he does. Everything makes sense, too. He'd come home and be like, ah, heavy load today. I'm like, 
<laughs> Wonder what he's talking about. Probably, probably not horse semen, right? Probably not. That's my dad. Very interesting guy. My mom is really interesting too. My mom is like this former Catholic turned hippie woman. She's like, oh, you're so amazing. She's like, it's like one of, like you'll open our cabinet and like a crystal just falls out. She's like, it's your Genji bead. I'm like, okay, I don't know. What that is. <laughs> and um, she's very like peace and love and wants everyone to get along. But she's also still like a white suburban mom. And that like comes out sometimes. <laughs> so she's just like, oh, I just, I just want everyone to love everyone. And just, just peace and love and no violence. Just, just no violence. I just want everyone to get along. And then my neighbor's car got broken into. And immediately she's just like, we need an AR-15. <laughs> we should get an AR. Every, all the kids get AR-15s for Christmas. We'll do, we'll do uh, bump, bump, bump stockings. Bump stocking Christmas. Glocks in the stocks, as we say. <laughs> so yeah, yeah my, my dad is Jewish and my mom is Catholic, so they didn't want to raise me either religion, so they kind of raised me this fake religion that they found in Illinois. It's like, it's like a religion that was made in the 70s. Uh, it's, it's like, first of all, if your religion is made in the Super Bowl era, that's not a religion, that's a book club. Uh, <laughs> But so I had this complicated relationship with religion because what I really knew was like what I saw on the street. And what I saw was like these like Jesus street preacher people. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen these people? First of all, why do they all have the worst audio equipment? <laughs> it, like they're all, it, it always sounds like they're preaching through like a used PA system. It's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ the Lord, the second of the Son of the Mitt Romney, the Son of the Son of the Dallas Buyers Club, the Son of the Son of the Son of the upgrade in your craft, man. You know? <laughs> this is your livelihood. Second of all, what is your big plan? Like, have you ever met someone that's like, yeah, I used to be an atheist until this sweaty guy yelled at me <laughs> through a Fisher-Price megaphone, and uh, now I'm a Catholic, yeah. I wear khakis now, I drink milk with my meals. Uh. <laughs> so, looking back at all the things that make up my identity, the time period we live in, folks! <laughs> the mistakes... I've made. Oh, that's the PRC you're talking about, seven. <laughs> the people I looked up to, the music I listened to, I realize, much like the way I look, that I'm wrong. You know, I thought I looked like Brad Pitt, but I really have resting Hermione Granger face. <laughs> In my head, I think I'm just like this cool celebrity guy. I thought I was like this. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I'm actually more like this. <laughs> I'm more like my parents than I am anything in the world. And as hard as I try to be this cool celebrity guy, I will always just be the son of a hippie and a horse pimp. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cincinnati. You've been a good boy. You've been a good boy. <laughs>